Geeky Classic Rock. Hey, my friend, what's up? Hey, Dean, uh, are you eating something right now? No, I'm good, bro. No, I just got a couple smoothies. I'm fine, man. Go ahead. Dean Castronovo, I'm so sorry that he is such a pain in my you-know-what. Oh, come on. You're good. Come on. It's all good. <laughs> How are you, Dean? I'm doing well. I just did a show in uh, Houston. It was awesome. We did the rodeo, a bunch of people. Just incredible. Did a great show and heading off to the next city. I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> That's going to be crazy for you. Like, you know, you just, here we are. We're just going here, get on the plane or whatever and, and move it. Yeah, pretty much. All I know is day off and show day. Today yeah. is day off. That's all I know. <laughs> and you don't have many of those, but... Well, yeah, we, we, we fit them in as best we can. I mean, it's all about the routing. So, yeah, we get as many as we can get in. <laughs> At our age, we need them. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Dean, we were so lucky to see you guys in Manchester, New Hampshire the other night. And oh, my. All right. So first of all, I was completely sweating by the time the show was over because I was having so much fun. And second of all, you are able to sing. And I don't care what anybody says. I say you have hands down the best catalog to sing and perform ever. Oh, yeah. I mean, Journey's the best. I mean, you know, greatest American rock band, in my opinion, in, mm-hmm. you know, ever. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure there's some doubters and some critics, but for me, oh, man. I mean, the hits, I mean, even, you know, even just uh, the songs that aren't hits. I mean, it's just really, really great stuff. I mean, everyone around us just singing the entire <laughs> time awesome. how crazy awesome. is that though i mean how does that make you feel well you know it i mean i've been very fortunate you know in my career to do a lot of things but for me this is i mean i i love this music i live and breathe this music um you know i grew up with this stuff uh and there's just something about journey's legacy and 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 the music that they produced is just uh I mean, it's timeless, and and it, it's it's stood the test of time. I mean, the songs are still great, and you know, you got. I mean, everybody knows "Don't Stop Believing." That song will never go away. It's right. just one of those songs. It's you know, it's like a when when the chips are down, that's the song that comes up. <laughs> you know, and yeah. it's, that's a that's a, it's an honor to be able to play that song and, and play these songs every night. And speaking about an honor. I have to talk to you about the open letter that Neil did to you in oh, tribute yeah. of you. I mean, did you know about that? Oh, heck no. I mean, I, you know what's funny? Uh, Karen, my, my uh, web administrator, she, I was asleep, you know, and I get up in the morning and having my Red Bull and trying to wake up and, and I, I'm going through my phone and I see that text and I'm like, and I was like, okay, I gotta try and open this up. So I tried to open it up, and I couldn't open it up. And so I was like, oh my gosh, you know, you have to have your own password and stuff for for Facebook to get on there. And of course, Karen has that, so I had to have Karen send it to me so I could see it. Oh my god! And um, oh yeah, it brought tears to my eyes. I mean, I'm, Neil, uh, you know, uh, everything that 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 I've had in my career, I really got to give. You know, I, I give Jesus credit, but you know, I give Neil the, the credit for you know having his ear, you know, hearing, hearing the, the, the voices and, and, and bringing me in, you know, and, and, you know, uh, he had to exhibit tough love, you know, a, a lot. And, um, but it, it never soured, uh, the brotherhood that we share. I mean, that's, that was a beauty of, yeah, he's always been my big brother. I mean, he took me from a kid and basically molded me, you know, in, into the player and, and, uh, performer that I am. So I, I owe him, Everything. A huge debt of gratitude. I mean, words don't even, it doesn't even, you know, express the gratitude I have for him. He said that you, he was comparing you to Phil Collins, Don Henley. I mean, what did you yeah, say I to, to him? I him a lot for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. All right, how much? Gosh, those are huge shoes, even. I mean, I, that uh, was, like I said, I'm, I'm in awe. And, 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 you know, I don't even, I wouldn't know what to say because, to me, those guys, I mean, Phil Collins, you know, an amazing drummer outside of Genesis. I mean, the stuff he did with Brand X and stuff. Now, he's a, he's an animal drummer, and a lot of people don't know that. 
You know, Don Henley, the, you know, great pocket drummer, fantastic. What a voice, you know. Yeah. To be even put close to those guys is like, wow, that's, you know, that's, that's you know, humbling, really, really humbling. My gosh, you know? I, I can't even imagine. Like, what did you say to Neil after you figured all this out? Oh. Well, I, 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 well, I was in tears for real. I, I you know, I'm the, I'm the wimp in the band. I'm, I'm you, know, the, you know, I'm the town crier. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, um, I, I sent him a message back, and I just said, you know, it, it, it wasn't for you, bro. I mean, I'd have nothing, and even you know, at my worst of times, I mean, you know, you distanced yourself, but you had to, you know, and and I, I love you for never, you know, giving up on the real Dean that you knew back in bad English before I was even using drugs and before I got all wrapped up in all the hell that I did. I mean, he knew me, you know, coming out of a little small town in Salem, Oregon and, and uh, you know, taking me on this trip that I never in a million years thought would ever happen. I mean, I was going to fight for it, but I didn't realize it would, <clears throat> it would take, you know, moving to San Francisco and, uh, meeting Neil and, and him taking me through um, 90% of my career, really. Um, uh, it's just, it's you know, I didn't know what to say, you know. He knows, you know, Neil knows me well enough to know that, you know, I'm, I'm a softie and, and that kind of stuff really it hits, and especially after coming back, being asked, you know, by Neil and John and Arnell to come back. Um, you know, I don't take it for granted. And, um, uh, again, it's still, I, I still... I, I'm still in shock. I, I, I'm not going to lie. Every night is just, you know, I give glory to God, and I'm just, it's a perpetual state of gratitude every day and every night, Kiki. I'm grateful. But you know what? You show it, and we feel that from you. Absolutely, mm -hmm. hands down. No question. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't you can't not see it because I can't get the dang smile off my face. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. I, whether people think it's fake and, oh, he's just doing that no. for the cameras. No, I can't. No, get I... the smile off my face. I'm having a blast. I mean, I love this music. And, and you know, even though I was in other bands, you know, previously before I came back and did a lot of records and stuff, I never felt like I fit. You know what I mean? I never felt like, you know, like um, with Dead Daisies, I love the music. I love the band. I mean, they were great guys. Yeah. David Lowy, what a sweetheart for giving me a shot, you know. But I never felt like, well, this, this is not really me. I'm not a 70s retro rock player. I never was. Uh, but I, I did my best, you know, and they gave me that chance. And But, you know, I never felt at home, you know. And um, uh, with Generation Radio, I finally felt like I was at home. And the pandemic and everything that was going on, we couldn't. We couldn't work. There was just nothing we could do. We tried everything. And it's just like, nope, not ready yet, not ready yet. So time was not on our side. And then and then I got the call, you know, to come back. And it was definitely a gift from God. I mean, I give all glory to God. It's you know, nothing I did. So. Now, how did you originally connect with Neil? Oh, gosh, that was, um, let me think, 1988. I was in San Francisco. Um, working with a guitarist named Tony McAlpine, uh, like a really shredder guitarist, monster player. And um, I walked into rehearsals, and there was Neil. And I'm like, G -g 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 -g. you know, I mean, it was he was in the, the area, and I, I was in playing, and he, I guess he heard me through the walls, and he came walking in and put on a guitar, and we just started jamming on stuff, just messing around. And then he asked me, well, do you know the Journey stuff? And I'm like, hey, dude, as best as I can know it, not knowing exactly what's going on, you know, because Steve Smith's such an amazing player. Like, I know the songs. I don't know if I'm doing the parts right, but I know the songs. And um, we proceeded to jam, and then he took me out to his car and, and um, plugged in some stuff on the cassette. And I'm, I'm thinking about doing a solo record. Would you want to be involved? And I was like, oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, are you kidding? You know? And about after that, he gave me the number. I gave him hit mine. And about a week, maybe a week or two weeks later, he called and goes, dude, I'm not doing the, the solo record. I'm putting it on hold. Uh, you know, he's, you know, John and, and John Wayne and Ricky want to do this thing. And I said, I wouldn't come down unless I brought you. So do you want to come down? And, of course, I said, no, I don't want anything. I don't want no part of that, of course. So, <laughs> I mean, I jumped at the chance, obviously. Gonna, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Are you kidding? <laughs> so, yeah, I... I Went down, and there was a ton of drummers, great players, monster players, like Ron Wixo, and, you know, all these great players were, were in line for the gig, and, and I came in, and, and, you know, thank God, you know, by the grace of God, I, I, I was picked to do it. And ever since then, it's been like, you know, Neil taking me from that to Hardline, and then taking it from Hardline to Paul Rogers, and then, um, you know, he went off, and, and I think it was, um, I think it was a 90, 
93, just after Paul Rogers, I got the call to do Ozzy. So I only had like maybe three or four years away from Neil. And then, you know, I was back doing stuff with him. I, I always say it, music is just a circle. And all of you guys that I always talk to, you're all connected in one way or another. But you and Neil mm-hmm. have this massive, I mean, past and connection. Oh, huge, hon. I mean, and it, it's undeniable. It's, I mean, even when we play on stage, um, I feed off of him. And he feeds off of me. You can see it. Um, I liken it to Alex and Eddie Van Halen. I, I, I liken it to that. Mm-hmm. And that's what it feels like. Because if Neil's having a bad night or not, not playing-wise, if he's having, he can't hear or there's something funky in the sound or something, yep. I can read him, you know? And there's a certain look on his face, like, and it's, it's not a deer in the headlights. It's like squinted eyes, like, what the heck's going on? I can't understand what you're doing. I can't hear it. Yeah. So I can read him. A lot of people think, oh, he's, he's pissed off. He's mad or he's angry at the monitor guy. It's like, no, he can't hear. Yeah. And, and there, you know, there's certain things that he, he needs to hear in his mix. So I can adjust to that, which is really cool. If, if he's got that one look, I know, okay, he can't hear anything. And that's, we call it staying home. Dean stays home. He's not going out and crazy and out and playing a bunch of chops. He's just keeping it meat and potatoes so Neil can, can, you know, hear what he's doing. And then there's times we call it wiggly head. When he gets his head and he starts playing, he's looking at me. He's kind of like moving his head back and forth. And then I know, okay, it's on. <laughs> and we just start blazing together. We, we just start tearing it up together. Especially in the middle jam on um, um, uh, that, that, that wheel in the sky. He'll, he'll come over here, look at me. He's got this thing, and he's got that look. And it's like, okay, bro, let's go. <laughs> wiggly head. I love it. Yeah, wiggly head. I said, dude, you got the wiggly head going, bro. You were going tonight. So it's really cool. Now, have you heard John Waite lately? His voice is great. And I'm going, oh, my gosh, would they do bad English again? <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I love John. I love John. I do, too. More than he loves me. Let's put it that Oh, way. gosh. <laughs> I doubt that. You know, um, I love Johnny very much. And, um, um it was an honor to work with him. My God, you know, my first real singer in a first real big band was he, you know, and it was like, wow, you know. So, yeah, I, I would love to work with him, but I don't think, you know, he's so far removed from that yeah. that type of music, you know, that and that poppy thing. He's gone off and he's he's done his own thing, and, and uh, I don't think he wants to go back. I mean, he's I think he's happy where he's at, and God, I would do anything to work with him. I mean, gosh. Anytime, any day, just, uh, but yeah, I think bad English was, I think he loved it, but it also, I think it, he had a war inside because he was such a traditional rock blues singer and, and to, to kind of, in his eyes, kind of um, bow to the knee of corporate, you know, pop rock songs and get a songwriter and outside writers. I, it just didn't fit with him. He's a, he's a, he's a true artist, John is. Yeah. And, and I think he was just like, man, I'm whoring myself out here and I don't dig it. And that's, you know, I've only seen a few artists like that, 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 you know, that I've worked with. Paul Rogers is one, Glenn Hughes, John Waite. You know, Neil's one of those two. He's like, man, I want to rock. I want to play. I don't want to, you know, he's one of those players. Yeah. So um, I don't think John will ever go do that again. You know, he's a purist. God bless him, man. Not a lot of those guys out there anymore. Now it's like, how much you pay me for that record? I'll sing whatever you put in front of me. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. He, he doesn't do that anymore. I mean, you know, he did it because he did it. And I think it, it really... I think it bothered him, you know. I think he was just like, man, this is not who I am, and I don't believe it when I'm singing it. Right. You know, and it was, he was just, it just wasn't his thing. Yep, I mean, but we, you know, just looking back at bad English videos and watching you guys, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was yeah. just, yeah. Uh, I was a little kid then with the big poodle do. I was 23, <laughs> man, 23 or 24, just on the cusp of being 24. So, yeah, it was heavy duty for me. Just yeah. like, Wow. I remember getting my first, you know, gold record uh, on um, Halloween, uh, um, 1989. It was Halloween, and um, I, I remember calling my mom and dad on a payphone. We had payphones. There were no I, cell phones. I had a payphone. I remember those. And, um, yeah, and I, and I called them crying in tears. Again, town crier. Just like, oh, my God, Mom, Dad, I, I, I did it. I'm here. I'm in, the big, I'm in the big game. You know, it was pretty heavy. Oh my god. Dean, I can't. Like I the stuff you've done though, it's massive. You know, just trying to piece together everything you've done. It's it's hard to yeah. do that. But one piece which I think is so cool is now Todd Jensen. I love saying his name, by the way. He is in yes. with you guys now and you him and Neil were in Hardline together. How did that yeah. all happen again? 
No, that was another thing. Well, um, um, I think Marco at the time had some some gigs he he had lined up, and he couldn't cancel them. And we were thinking, oh gosh, okay, who who are we going to get? And Neil goes, Neil was the first one and said, you know, I think I'm gonna. What do you about what about TJ, man? What do you? I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna call TJ. And I'm like, dude, no brainer, <laughs> perfect. Todd's perfect for this. If Marco can't do it, this is the guy. And uh, I've known Todd since I was 14. I used to sneak into to clubs. And actually, he and those guys, they knew it, too. I'd, they would sneak me in through the kitchen, and I'd go watch him play on the side, you know, where you know where monitors were hung out, and, and, and watch him play, and then sneak back into the kitchen. And this was a long time ago when he was in a band called Sequel. So I've known TJ since then. I mean, since I was a kid. And I always looked up to him because not only was he an amazing bassist, an amazing singer, he was so nice. And, I lo- you know, you look at your heroes, and that was a Portland hero to me, you know, to look up to that guy. He's in sequel, man, and he's a bass player, and he's talking to me. You know, that was huge for me. Yeah. So we always kept in contact, and he was always so kind. And then, boom, Hardline came up, and like, who bass player? I'm like, oh, what about Todd Jensen, man? He, he was in Daily Rock. He's bad. We should get him. And Yeah. Worked out pretty darn good, man. T is fantastic. He is, and it, it's just you. You guys are all so nice, and and it's so funny because well, think about it. Well, you are a, an absolute sweetheart, especially to always talk to me. Like, thank you. And oh, well, we, you know what, you guys. I mean, if it wasn't for you, Kiki, and and a lot of the journalists out there mm. that do this kind of stuff, come on, we would be nothing. I mean, you know how the the journalism is now. I mean, come on, how many? How many real, true journalists are out there anymore? Yeah. You know that don't that don't they're not under a corporate name and they've got to say a certain thing. And yep. if they're they're not in the the mindset of the magazine or whatever, you know they they can't speak their mind. They got to say what they're supposed to say and they do what they're supposed to do. There's not a lot of you guys out there anymore. So, man, are you kidding? I mean, this is if it wasn't for you, Kiki. We wouldn't be able to do this because oh, you guys are real. You know, I, I can name about probably six or seven that I've talked to that are true journalists and just speak it. Yeah. You know, they're not saying, well, I got to say this so it doesn't offend this. And, you know, it's it's a nice thing. Couldn't I couldn't so, work like that anyway, but it's... What, it, what's that? I, I missed that. What? I just couldn't work like that anyway. I would have to say oh, what's I, I, what's in my heart. Yeah, if, you're not, if you don't believe it, if, you, if you're not, then why do it? Yep. I mean, that's, you know, there you go. No. So, yeah, we're all nice guys. I mean, yeah, I guess it's because we, we know what we have. We're grateful every day that we get to play this music. Well, I, for one, I can't speak for the rest of the guys, but for me, man, come on. And the icing on the cake is I get paid to do it. I would, you know, I told Neil when he got me back in, he was talking about, well, we're going to talk about, you know, the financial thing. He said, dude, I would pay you (laughs) to come back. That's how important this is to me because I love the music. And and I love, I missed you guys, you know, as tough as it was to be away. And I know you had to be tough, Neil. You, You know, I would do anything to come back. I, this is the most home at home I've ever felt in any band in my life. And it's so funny because when, well, I, I don't want to say funny, but ironic, when I spoke with you last, it was in October of 2020, you made it uh-huh. very clear then Journey is home to you and that you would yeah. always be ready, willing, and able to go back. Yes. So yes, ma'am. when you played that first show with the guys again, oh, the very first yeah. one, please tell us what was that moment like when you stepped out on that stage and opened your mouth and hit that drumstick yeah. down for the first time again. Well, let me tell you how before that. I'll give you the, little, the, the precursor, I guess, or whatever, the prequel, whatever it is to the... I, I had, my mother had passed away I'm on... So sorry. Um, oh, gosh, on July 19th at like 12 o'clock midnight. I mean, she went home that night. And, uh, of course, I was up all night just, you know, shock fear you know crying tears everything and, and about gosh it was like i don't know maybe six thirty in the morning my time i think he was in chicago at the time he's like dino we need you to come here and 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 work on this stuff um they, and narda's um you know he's he's learning the songs and, and we figured you'd be the best guy to help him kind of guide him on on the parts and get him get him more comfortable with the stuff i said dude i'd love to i said but can you please give me a day Mom just passed away. And, of course, he was like, oh, bro, I'm so sorry. And so, you know, he gave me a day. And I said, just, just give me, I just need to kind of focus, get, get, you know. So, anyway, I, I flew out on the 21st, I believe it was, uh, to Chicago. And, um, you know, they picked me up. And, and as soon as I walked into the, the rehearsal place, oh, my gosh, 
I mean, they were, I was in tears. I just sat down and they started playing, and Narda was playing, who's a monster drummer. Yeah. And I was listening to him play this stuff, and I, I, you know, town crier again. I just got teary, and it's like, my God, what am I here for, you know? And it was only going to be for two shows. Oh, it was wow. only going to be for the Chicago Aragon, I think it's Aragon Ballroom, yep. and, and um, Lollapalooza, and I was to go home. Um, but And I knew that. So it was it was great. So when I walked in rehearsals, it was it was heavy duty. So we went through about I was on day three, I think, or four of rehearsals with them. And uh, Neil was saying, "Look, we're going to do two drummers. This is going to sound killer. Let's just do two drummers." I'm like, "That would be great, bro. For these two shows, that'd be great." And um, I, I again another you know ten o'clock in the morning, wake up, and my phone is blowing up. I'm like, you know, I'm getting this just ringing and, and text, you know, the whole, all the whole stuff. And I look, it's like, congratulations, man. Congratulations on being back with the band. I'm like, well, it's only a couple shows. And um, my web lady again said, no, no, no. Neil just announced that you're back. And I went, wait a minute. Ooh, I'm back. What do you mean? What? <laughs> How am I back here? And, and Neil said, I'm, you know, I read it. And then I'm 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 permanent member back again with Narda. We're going to do a two drummer thing, and so yeah, that was another one. I was like, what? So you and, didn't uh, even again, know? I'm freaking out, running around the room, praising God, thanking the Lord, just going nuts. And um, uh, I ended up um, going in, you know, and and looking at everybody at rehearsals, like you guys. Why did you? You could have told me first. It would have been nice to know first. But I was so grateful. Then yeah, the Aragon show came and. Oh my gosh! Yeah, again, you know, it's so emotional for me. Everything like it's such a spiritual thing to see or to be in a position where you've lost everything, literally, literally lost everything. You know, um, the respect of you know the industry, the respect of my friends, my family were disappointed. Everybody, you know, and and to have God restore that um, the way that it did took seven years, but you know it was slow. It was a slow process building me back to being the man that I used to be and the man that I should have been had I not done all those stupid ass things, you know? So, um, uh, yeah. So do you been playing and, and we're smiling and, and laughing and I was scared to death too. I'm not gonna lie. I was scared to death because I didn't know how the fans would react. Oh gosh. They went you know, nuts. You don't know after, after the stuff that happened and, and the things that, that went down, you know, you know, you, you have a lot of, I had a lot of haters, I, rightfully so. You know, what I did was, you know, when I was messed up out of my skull, it was pretty heinous stuff. So uh, it was heartbreaking, you know, and it was scary. And, um, you know, a lot of people didn't know the real story behind it. A lot of that stuff was really blown out of proportion. And uh, well, um, media, uh, right? I can thank the media for that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but here, neither here nor there, the stuff that happened was rough and it was bad. And I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, that Dee Dee stuck by me, yeah. you know, and knew this, that's not him. That's him when he was messed up. I know the real him. My, you know, my ex-wives, they all knew it. That's, that's not him. You guys don't know him. So gratefully, I, I went up there in tears, played the show. Fantastic. And uh, I got through that one. So then the big one came, Lollapalooza. And that was heavy duty Gosh. to hear the fans. I've got a video my son took of, of Don't Stop Believing mm. and Lollapalooza. And you cannot hear the band. They are singing from the, I mean, word one, they are singing. Just a small town. I mean, oh. the whole freaking crowd, 90,000 people. Dang. I'm like, oh, my, this is how powerful this is. Yeah. So, yeah, we're so emotional. Highs and lows and fear and doubt. and You know, all of it was just running through my head. And I had to calm myself down. Just like, breathe, bro. Just breathe. You know, it's going to be all right. Just breathe. Well, yeah, so it, those are, it was intense, son. It was intense. Well, from the outside, okay, I, I mean, you know, again, I wasn't a, a part of that. I have to say, right. you right. know, lots of love to Dee Dee because clearly yeah. she's an extremely strong woman and oh. loving and caring. And, you know, I, I, I understand. I do. I completely yeah. understand. So, you know, yeah. big, big love to her. And also... Yeah. Huge. My other, you know, question to you is, you said it took you seven years to, yeah. you know, get back. What what yeah. was pulling you to say, I got to get out of this. I, I can't do this anymore. Because yeah. some people don't make it. And you know that. You've seen yeah. people 
Oh, so you I had ups and downs with the, with the, you know my back issues. I had to get on pain medication, which is a slippery slope for any addict. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to have DD hold those things. You know, because I so that that was a low part of my life. Like I got to get off this crap, but I can't. So I got to work. I'm working with the dead daisies. I had to keep going. You know, it's like it was a tough time for me. So um, I don't know. It was just it took seven years because it was like for the first two and a half years I didn't want to look at drums. I didn't want to leave the house. I was so humiliated, you know, by everything. And, and Dee, Dee was so humiliated by, you know, how they spun it. You know, um, it, it was hard. I didn't, and I remember walking around the house and I'd look at my V drum kit and I'd just kind of look and walk by. She goes, when are you going to, when are you going to play again? I said, when I'm, when God tells me it's time, I'm not ready yet. And it took two and a half years for me to be quote unquote ready. I remember Serafino at Frontier say, hey, are you ready to do this? And I have to keep turning down. I'm not ready, bro. I got a, I got a lot of work to do on me, and I don't, this, 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 this is gone. I had to lay it down. It's gone. I don't, if I never play again, okay. It'll be okay. But I'm not, I'm not going to push this because I had a lot of work to do on me, recovery and, and, and dealing with the, the reasons why I was getting high and, and you know, because you know, drug, drugs is a symptom of some huge things. There's a lot of things I can never, ever talk about. I will never discuss. And you shouldn't have um, to. You know, you and it's, it was, I had to peel that onion. I'm telling you, man, I'm still peeling it. it it's an, it's going to be a lifelong thing for yeah. me. Uh, you know, I know Corey Taylor, Taylor has talked about some of the things he's gone through in his life. And same thing, man. You, you've got to get to that place where it's like, okay, it's time to, to address this. Good, bad, ugly, address it. And, um, you know, it took me two and a half years before I could say, you know what, I'm, I, I can play again. I think it's time. And that's when I started kind of, I'm not a good lyricist, but I started to write a little bit, just, you know, some ideas and things like that. And, and some of that stuff went on the record, you know, Light in the Dark. It came back, it came out. And that was so healing for me, Kiki. Oh, wow. my God, it was so healing. Because I could just spill my guts. And if it was good, great. I, I wasn't even thinking about, well, man, is this a good lyric? It's like, you know, I just kind of spill my guts. And thank God Alessandro and Jack and Doug helped me, you know, with, with the writing process of lyrics because I don't know how to do it. I just finally said, well, I, I don't know how, but this is what I'm feeling. I'm going to spill my guts. And if you can put music to that, go. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? yeah, and, and clearly Jack took some of your emotion and put it. That song oh, yeah. is amazing. I mean. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, all of it. it. It was Jack and Ollie. I mean, they all did. Dougie had a huge part of that, too, because, you know, he was my my go-to boy. He was my go-to guy. You know, when, when all my crap went down, he and Jack stood by. And you know how unpopular that was. You know, Michael Sweet, another one that had my back, said, look, we all fall. His was a big one. But God, you can't just kick him to the curb. Yeah. There's more to him than just him being on drugs for 24 days straight, not sleeping, and going crazy. You know, there's more to this man. And they knew me, you know. Yeah. They, and so they didn't give up. I give a lot of credit to Doug um, and to Jack and to Ollie and to Serafino and to Neil. And, you know, I mean, yeah. I got a long list of people that said, you know what? I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the press says. I know you. I know the real you. And that was huge. And, and still, I get, I get for kind of thinking about it. It's like, man, I mean, people got a lot of crap for having my back. Those well, guys, a lot of people did. So, you know. But those are true yeah. friends, and you know, yeah. you are so thankful you had such an amazing support system. And I'm guessing, of, of course, Dee Dee, but I'm guessing, yeah. you know, her maybe silently pushing you to get back out there had to have something yeah. to do with you finally saying, you know what, I gotta, I gotta get back out there. Yeah, it, it, was, it was her. She was a big one. Um, my exes, uh, you know, uh, the mother of my kids, um, mm-hmm. uh, Julie and, and Shelly and, and my boys, Roman and them, they knew it was like, even Dee Dee knew it was like, I'm not going to push him to play. Yeah. We, I know he loves it. I know that's his heart. But he, we, they knew I'm not ready yet. I, I can't. Yeah, if I go out there too early, too soon, it's going to happen again. Yeah. So I, until I address this crap. It, in some form, it'll happen again. I'll start using again, and, and I won't be. I won't have. I won't have. I wouldn't have addressed what needed to be addressed. Yeah. So you know, yeah, yeah. huge kudos to Didi and and my exes, and and you know, but Didi had to deal with it. And um, I, you know, I remember telling the DA, "You guys don't know him. I've known him since he was fourteen. You don't know him." And and you know, yeah, man, I. Huge props to D. 
Yeah. Huge. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean... We, we still have our, our, our bad moments, of course. Tell me one couple that doesn't. I but can't, you know I what? can't. Well, because I know, yeah. Yeah, we handle, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, but we handle it differently now. It's not me going out and saying, screw you, I'm going to go get high and right. numb myself. It's not about that no more. Right. You know, and there were times, man, you know, I was, oh, let's take more pills than I should, or that's why she had to hold them. And, you know, I had my relapses and I had my comebacks, and, you know, I'm just grateful to be alive, you know? Oh, my God. Grateful to be alive. And then she stood there, Kiki, she was there. She was there. Well, you know, again, so much love to her and because she's given you the strength. She, she's your base. She's your yeah. heart and soul. Yeah. And that is what yeah. gets us all through. We all need to have that. And it's yeah. we're, we're all happy. You're okay. And it, oh, yeah. you can just I tell, think, though. No, I mean, no, all of you guys, yeah, I, I guarantee you, my, my family, probably the happiest. <laughs> I'm sure. You know, they're just... They have their they have their dad back, their grandfather back, their husband back, their wife back. You know whatever they got, they got their, they got me back, and I'm the happiest in the world, man. This is this is the most joy I've felt in years because it all came full circle. I mean, how in, I mean, in a million years would you ever have thought that I would be asked back Dean. to one of the biggest bands in the world? Can I just say something? What happened, dude? I mean, that can only be God. I don't care if you oh coincidence. Oh, you're good. That's why they you know. Yes and no, but it wasn't no coincidence. This is no coincidence. I have to tell and you. I'll shout it to the rooftops. Whether you believe in that or not, or you believe in Christ or Buddha or, or Allah or whatever is, whatever is your higher power, man. That's mine, and, and I give I give him the credit. I, you know, this I don't know of anybody that could have could have done this. You know, got me back to I, where I am. I agree with you, and I have to tell you, I, I mean, not only myself, so many people knew you were going to be back with Journey. I, I don't know. I felt it. It's just, it's something that needed to happen. And now that you're with Journey, and no disrespect to anyone, but it's like right. the band has a new pop, if that makes any type of sense. You know, it does. The beauty about Steve Smith is he's such an amazing yes. drummer. Yes. The man can play anything. He's still my favorite drummer of all time. He's yeah. my biggest influence, even though I don't sound much like him. He's still my biggest influence and and to play his parts and to be there and, and do the the songs you know that he came up with the parts he came up with it's an honor you know uh steve is so rooted in in jazz and he's such an i think he's a better jazz player than he is a rock drummer i mean everybody will tell you that i mean he's the king of of all styles but man he excels in that in jazz he's a monster and um you know, I think for him, it was like, you know, he loved to be back, but it also was like, well, you know, this is not where my heart is. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that was, you know, it was time for him to even reevaluate and go, well, you know, I, I love doing this, but I miss doing what, you know, I used to do. Kind of like me. It's like, I love the dead daisies. I loved doing Revolution Saints, but I missed being where my heart is. Oh, you know, and I never thought I'd come back. Everybody would say, oh, you'll be back. You'll be back. I'm like, how? How is that going to happen? you got the greatest drummer on the planet playing who took my my spot he's playing that ain't gonna happen it's not gonna happen so, so you, when it did i you know i had a lot of i told you so i mean a ton of i told you so like all right all right all right i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> i find that so interesting though that you you had to deep down have a feeling that someday you would be back home because there's no way you could be that resistant because you are so spiritual. And I, yeah. I get exactly what you're saying. You know, we all try to visualize and, and all of that. But yeah. there had to be a piece of your heart that told you, someday I'm going to be back in that band. You know, when the, when those things would come in, I was just going to know. Whoever's telling me that, uh, I would I would just dismiss it like that's not going to happen. So don't get your hopes up. Don't, you know, here it is, don't stop believing, right? I, I stopped believing. I was like, nah, no, I, that, that door's closed. I've got to move forward. I've got to move forward. No matter what happens, I still got to keep moving forward. And if I never play again, I'll get a, I'll get a job like everybody else does and take care of my family. There's, there's no rock star in this heart. There's no room for rock star in this heart. You know, it's, it's all about being a servant and, and helping and being there for people and doing what I love without trampling over, you know, people to do it. So, you know, I never thought. I really didn't. And I would dismiss it, Kiki. I was like, yeah, no, 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 no. Nope. So I, of course, I'm very, 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 very grateful that I'm home with, with Neil and John and, and Arnell and, and Todd and, and everybody, John Chase and all of them. I'm just grateful. 
Now, see, I kind of take a step back, and you, you've always been in touch with Neil, though, and I'm thinking Jonathan, too, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. John, I mean, John and I were, were, when all this stuff happened, John actually, you know, he and Paula invited me down to the church, said, you know what, come down, spend some time here, and, you know, I had just given my life back to Christ, rededicated, started all over, and it, that was hugely healing mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. You know, I got to play with it, with him, you know, he plays his songs at, at the uh, at the church, and I knew the songs, so I, I got to play, you know, the songs with him, and, 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 and you know, just help to be restored, you know, to just have people around me that just, you know, swallowed me up in love, you know, they just immersed me in love, and the love of God, that was huge for me. I needed that. You know, so John was there in the beginning, I, I got to do his first Christian record, which was an honor as well, so, yeah, Johnny was the first one, and then, of course, Neil came came and, and, but Neil would always talk to me. He was always still yeah. in contact. How you doing, buddy? Are you okay? How are things going? You know, he was always there and John as, as well. So when Journey Through Time happened, it was like I jumped at the chance. Like, oh my gosh, I get to play these songs again because I never thought I would play these songs again ever. So that was huge for me as well. What a huge experience to come back and play those songs with Greg Raleigh. You know, I, geez, man, come on. God, I, I know. <laughs> Like, it's just yeah. insane because like I had, you know, said this to you before, too. You know, we were hoping that Journey Through Time was going to come to the East Coast. It never happened. I think you guys just did yeah. four shows on the West Coast. And yeah. people were, I mean, the shows were all sold out. People were yeah. raving about Journey yeah. Through Time. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. That, I mean, to be able to play the songs again and, and to reconnect with Neil was, was a big thing. For me, you know, um, to reconnect on on the stage and um, very emotional time, you know, as well. And even coming back to Journey now to reconnect with Jonathan, you know, because we hadn't talked in a couple of years after I did the record and stuff. And kind of, I had the dead daisies, and I was I was gone. And I was working, working, working. Yeah. So to reconnect with John and, and mend any fences that we had that I had screwed up because of my decisions and stuff um, was huge. I needed to, I mean, if anything, that was one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to come back. I was like, I need to, I need to make amends to these guys. I never got to do it in person. With Neil, yes, but not with John, wow. you know, and not with Arnell. And that was huge for me to do, to be able to say, look, guys, the things I said, the things I did, you know, I, I'm, I'm heartbroken, and I, I hope that someday you guys can forgive me. We can just move on no matter where this takes us. And it um, worked out. It worked out real good. Dean, how did Mother Father become your song? Because it is your song <laughs> now. Well, that one actually was, again, uh, when Steve, uh, Jerry was having his um, some vocal issues, they said, well, you know, let's um, let's put Dean on a, on a song and give Steve a little bit of a break. You know, we're the same sing lead. So I started singing Mother Father because it was like, it was kind of one that the fans didn't really know all too well. And it would give Steve, it's a pretty long song. I think it's like four or five minutes, something like that. So give him a little time to breathe get some some rest a little bit and uh maybe to you know sell some t-shirts and grab a beer <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I get, hot dog because, <laughs> but, you know it's not a very popular song but it just became something that just came you know it kept going and going and going and, and it kind of became my my song and especially now it's like my my damned anthem because it's talking about me and and kind of what i went through and it's like me i yeah, I still, I, I sing it during the old solo, I'm, you know, again, I get a little just, you know, teared up, well up a little bit, like, wow, man. Yeah. You know, it's, um, yeah, that's, and I love it. That's, if I don't sing any other song, that's the one I want to do. I, I don't like, you know, I don't like being a lead singer. I'm not going to lie. I don't like it. It's, it's not fun for me. It's very nerve wracking. If I'm playing drums and doing it, it's one thing. Because you're busy. You know, and one song, one song a night is fine with me. I don't need to sing anymore. But, you know, vocals are a biological instrument. I don't, I don't like to have a, a fickle instrument. You know, drums, I know I can do that all day, all day long. I got my day job. I know I can do that. Yeah. But singing is such a, you know, climate, weather. I mean, you know, what you ate the night before, it's all relative. And I hate that. Okay. I don't like that discipline. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've never been a disciplined drummer. You know, I just go out and play. So for me to go, well, I got to do this at twelve thirty, and then twelve forty-five, I have to eat this and this and this, and take this medication, and then I got to stop talking for three hours, and you know, eh, oh no wow, thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't be able to stop talking at all. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, it's it's crazy, and, and kudos to her now. Oh My gosh, God. I don't know, I don't know. He does it every night, and he's and he's, he's killing it. So it's like, yeah, I don't want that. Mm-mm. And no the, thanks. And, and the flipping too, like he flips around. Like how can you do that and sing at the same time? I don't understand it. Yeah. Like he's he no he's he's healthy that boy's healthy yes he and is again, he's very 
disciplined. Yeah. He's got his, his, his routine down and it, it's, it's stuck to by the letter. I mean, it's, you know, and, and he doesn't deviate from that. And that's a, that takes a really strong man and a strong discipline, you know, a big, strong mindset. You know, I'm ADHD, so I just bounce around. <laughs> <laughs> so for me to have that discipline, uh-uh, it's not, I'm not really good at that. So what do you do to, you know, before you step on that stage, what are you doing to your, in your well, headspace? Like, what do you say to yourself before you go out there well, to entertain? Believe it or not, Kiki, this is what I do. And, you know, again, you know, haters, whatever. I, I have the mask on, right? And I, I, I usually get dressed around 730. And I spend about, I don't know, 45 minutes walking around the arena. Like, outside, you know, where the backstage area is, just walking back and forth and praying. And, and thanking God, really, for real. And then, you know, warming up with my hands, just kind of, you know, stretching and twisting and, and getting myself together. But that's what I do. And uh, it just, it puts me in a great mindset, a, a set of, a, you know, a, a mindset of joy. Just like, my, here we go, man, this is going to be awesome. And I can't get the smile on my face. Once I'm doing that, I'm praising the Lord for what, is, what has happened in my life and what I'm doing. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. You know, it's, it's all about Him. So I, that's what I do. And I used to do that back in the day, you know, before all my stuff happened, but obviously very hypocritical because I was, you know, going home and getting high. So, but, you know, I still had that root, you know, that, mm-hmm. that spiritual root. I just think that now, I know now that I've, I've attached to the spiritual end, the spiritual part of myself, and not that religious, you know, you know thing that, you know, you have to be at a certain church, you got to do a certain thing. You know, we're all spirit beings. So I've just attached, I've really attached to my spirit, who I am, who my, my real me is, you know, and that's in every religion or every belief system. It's, you know, it's all spiritual. So you, I, I've been able to attach myself and, and connect with, with, you know, the spirit that's helping me through this. So oh, that's what I do. I, it might I sound corny that. and stupid, but that's what I do. No, it doesn't sound corny and stupid at all. It's just that is what you do for you because everybody yeah. is so different. I'm sure Arnell does something completely different. Neil does something yeah. completely different. Yeah. So it, that's you. Yeah, and it works. And it, it's worked and it's, it's great. And even when I have a bad night, it's fun. I, just, I don't even care. <laughs> Cause I have those. <laughs> so, all right. So what, what, what would make a bad night? Um, if I'm not, you know, again, you got to feel the, the, like I get a feel of the arena. I get a feel of the people. Obviously you get, a, you got to, there's a certain feeling that I get that I know that I'm feeling warm. I'm loose. Yeah. It feels good. You yeah. know, you have a good night. And then there's nights when you're thinking too much, like, you know, okay, I remember that lick. I'm, you know, do I want to do that again? Or I, you know, that's, those are the things that go through my head. And that's when I start screwing up. I remember Herbie Herbert saying a long time ago to me, when you're thinking, you're stinking. And, and that, that has stuck with me since the day he told me back in 92. So I try not to think, but if I'm thinking too much on stage, usually that's when I mess up, make mistakes, or, you know, I don't stay focused. Yeah. I, need to, I need to be more, you know, just let it flow instead of thinking about it. So that's when I have a bad night. I miss, a, you know, just some drum licks or, you know, I, I wasn't precise. Uh, you know, my vocal might be out of tune. I, you know, hit a few, few three or four notes that are, you know, sharp or flat or whatever. And then I get hard on myself, you know, because I want to bring the best I can to the people. And, and then in turn, I want to make, make sure that I, you know, I'm happy with my performance. Yeah. So that's, that's a huge thing. That's, that's big for me. So, yeah, I, I, have, I have bad nights, man. When I'm thinking too much, that's where all the feel and, and all the soul of my playing or anyone's playing just goes out the window. Yeah, but I don't think you have many of those nights at all. Oh, if girl, any. I can tell you, I, I, there are many, 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 many. So, you know, it depends. It depends on, you know, certain factors. You know, it just depends. Now... Herbie Herbert, I'm so sorry yes. about his passing and, you know, a lot, oh my gosh, lots of crazy things went on last year. But what was one thing that you learned from Herbie that you still carry with you today? Well, um, yeah, a lot of things. Um, he used to tell me longevity is the key. Learn every style, learn every, you know, style of music and try to play him at, at your best. Be the best at, at, at what you play mm-hmm. when you play, because longevity is the key. If you want to keep working in this business team, you got to be able to adapt, play with anybody and anywhere in any situation. That was a, that was a huge one. Um, and, and then, of course, you know, he had these little, little Herbie analogies, like, you know, chops belong in the butcher shop. You know, you have all these really <laughs> wicked drum chops, like, yeah, they belong in the butcher shop. You don't need all those chops to play a good rock song or a pop song. You know what I mean? I got that. That was one of them. And then the one I'm saying, when you're thinking, you're stinking. Yeah, I like that. That was huge. (laughs) 
I do like I that. learned a lot from him. But he was like, again, he was a mentor to Neil, and he was like a, a Neil was the mentor to me. So I got Herbie by proxy through yeah. Neil. Yeah. But Herbie was always a, just a straight ahead, you know, no bullshit. He told you what he felt, mm-hmm. and he, there was no black and white. And this is the way it was, and and that's it. You know, he had a, a really good philosophy on on life like that. It's like it's either this or this. You don't be screwing around in the middle. So you know, I learned a lot from him. And he was always just you know to have a manager like that or Irving Azoff, John Barrick, you know, um, um, give you you know credit or accolades for for what you do as a player and stuff is it's very humbling. Yeah. And, and those guys have you know they've worked with the biggest and managed the biggest artists in the world. So. You know, you take that stuff and just go, man, it is. It's gratitude every day, my friend. Oh, it really I, it's just gratitude I all feel day it. long. I feel it. I just, and oh my gosh. And like I said, Dean, literally everyone feels it from you oh. for sure. <laughs> now, well, you, you know what? It's me and, and, and that's that's what comes out and that's all I got. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we like it. We like it. Keep oh, giving it. Thank you. Now, do, my friend. <laughs> you are doing back-to-back shows I, I got to ask this question I, in my mind yeah. is the central park show this summer. Mm-hmm. Then you went to do the tunnels to towers concert in Jones beach, which was like an hour and a half away and it was pouring same rain. Day. Please, please tell us that day. Cause that had to be insane. <laughs> well, we got, we got on stage for the, 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 the uh, New York one, the, the central park one. And it was cool. We did our songs. I think it was like, what I don't remember how many we did three or four. I, I forget, but we did it literally got in our SUVs, with a police escort and drove to Jones Beach. So we were blazing, just, you know, you know, uh, sirens blazing, the whole thing. Got there, and we were supposed to go on at 1030 or 1045. And because of the rain that hit Central Park, it was coming our way. So we had actually, we didn't get on stage, I don't, I don't think, until 1230 that night. But all the fans stayed with their raincoats and their, you know, the ponchos yep. and everything. And it was just like, go, 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 go. And I forgot what those were like, you know. It was it was fun. And, you know, just remember the, just the excitement, the whole day, just being able to give back like that, to do something for, you know, for uh, Total for Towers. It's huge because I'm a supporter of them really big time. So, you know, to be able to give back to them was awesome. Oh, that, that, so that, you know, cool. And I, I got a couple of friends that are in the police force there in New York and stuff, so and firefighters and stuff. So it's, you know, it was nice, really, really good. Now, the tour wraps up here in the U.S. on May 11th in Hartford, and next year you guys are celebrating your 50th anniversary. So the big question, mm-hmm. what does Neil have under wraps? Is he's talked to Steve Perry yet or what? <laughs> you know what? We don't talk about Steve. Oh, you know, I, I, I do because I love him, but yeah. I don't talk to the band members. We don't really discuss, you know, Steve coming back for the 50th thing. You know, for, for us, it's just like, okay, next year we're going to go on the road. We, I, you know, we have a couple ideas of who we're going to go with and how it's going to happen. Of course, I can't say anything about that, but it's going to be, um, it'll be great, just like, like this year. You know, I'm glad we just got in early because i know everybody and their dog is going out like this summer i mean they're you know, all the all the buses are gone pretty much all the trucks everything is gone it's all being you know leased out to other vans so we got in just in time and then we're going to take the rest of the year off let the record um, you know come out and and uh, do some one-offs here and there and then next year we'll be out i think we'll do a meals talking a stadium tour but i can't tell you who it's with oh my gosh yeah, I know it's gonna be awesome. It's oh, gonna be awesome. That is good. <laughs> All right. So, what about the new album coming out? Is there anything planned for the release? I'm sure there is, but you know what? I I think there is, but I don't know. Okay. Really, what, what's going on? Yeah, I think they were talking about having it come out in May, April or May. Well, and when they, it does come out, I, I think we'll do something, some sort of show. But I'm not positive. I, I, you know, Neil is Neil's managing the band now as well as you know playing guitar, so he's got a lot on his plate. That guy is just. He's twenty four seven on the phone. Yeah, you know, working things out and getting somebody. He's doing a great job. I got to say, he's doing really, really good. So, um, <laughs> you know, we don't know. I, I, I guess I, I need to ask him. I should have asked him before I called you before we did this interview. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> we were just busy last night with the show. You know, the Houston game. So, yeah, a little funky, but yeah. Um, I'll let you know. You know, I'll let you know before anybody else. Thank you. you please do. <laughs> of course, I will. <laughs> now, now, is everybody is talking about you in such a positive light. Jonathan Cain just called you a freak of nature in a great way. And oh, your f- that's very sweet. Right? Freak of nature in a great way. In, in a great, great way. That's- your fans, it, I mean, I, 
honestly, you're the best drummer, singer in mm-hmm. history, in the industry, everywhere. Your fans, some of the things your fans are saying could watch and listen to you all day, brother. His voice is powerful, crisp. He can sing in the original key. He's the real deal. I mean, these are the things, and that's just what, two things people are saying about you. And it just has to feel, I know, know, Dean, a lot of the time you're saying how grateful you are and and you're just smiling from ear to ear and we see that and we feel it, but it really, honest to gosh, truly has to be so beyond amazing for you well it is just the whole the whole aspect of everything you know i gotta be honest i don't read a lot of the comments i mean and, and that's that's not for for only reason is you know i never want that to overshadow you know what god's done here i mean it's it's i'm grateful for the fans saying those things and it's very nice but i i don't really read them very much because i you know i think if you start believing your own hype yeah that's when you let go of the spirituality aspect of your of your life Got you it. just feel well i'm okay i don't need god i don't need whatever i'm i'm good you know i know i so i don't read them a lot but karen my web my, my web lady she tells me some of the things and i have to go okay 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 enough <laughs> and of course Dee, Dee, you know read some of the stuff and, and, the, and the family reads it and stuff and and they just say they're, they're, the comments are really, really sweet. And I can't thank the fans enough for just allowing me to come back and, and to, to welcoming me with open arms. Oh, that was a horrible pun. <laughs> it was a great lead-in, though. And I, I got hey, I'll be here all week. Try the meal. <laughs> no, it's, um, it's humbling. It is, for real. It's very humbling. And um, I can't thank the fans enough. I mean, words can't express it. That's why I try to do the best I can. And I'll do my best to... to um, um, to continue the legacy that, that you know Steve and and John and Neil and, and Ross and Steve Smith built, you know, and and have carried for gosh fifty years, you know, so, I, I won't let them down again. If I if I let them down, I've let myself down, and I'm just I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I don't so, think you're going to do that. I I just feel so much power and and strength from you. It's it's just crazy. Ooh. Now, not too long ago, I said that Journey is filled with a ton of don't stop believing stories, with you, of course, being one of them. What pushes you to be the all-around amazing husband, father, granddad, and performer that you are? Well, again, Kiki, I'm a broken record. You know, I I put God first, because I put it, I put, I did it my way, and you saw what happened when I, when I took my hand out of God's and I did it my way, you know? Uh, when I let go of God, this is when all hell broke loose, literally. So, I mean, I do. I, it's my spirituality. I, I try to be. I'm not. I'm not perfect, gosh, and I don't want to be. Oh, he's a big Christian guy. Did, did, did. No, I try, man. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. I do the best I can, you know, at every given day. And yeah, I'm gonna probably flip off the guy that you know pulls in front of me. Oh, that's not very Christian. Well, I, I'm a human being first, <laughs> yeah. you know, and so. <laughs> I just, you know, it's, I gotta give, I gotta give credit to, to God. I do. It's like, you know, you put him first and, and for real, for me, you know, everything falls into place correctly for me. I'm not pushing this on nobody. You know, I, I, I know, I know what's happened in my life. And if you want to look at my life and, and see, that's how I do it. I got, God's got to be first in everything. And then the rest comes, you know, and, and yeah, I'm going to bar my life. I'm going to have shitty days. That happens. It mm-hmm. is what it is. It's life. I'm a human being. Yeah. I don't claim to be anything. Oh, he's so religious and spiritual. It's, man, I just try, like everybody else on this planet, I'm just trying to get through the day. Just trying to get through this life without either dying, hurting somebody, physically, emotionally, mentally, you know, whatever. Just try and walk in love, treat people with love and respect, and just get through this life. Because it ain't easy out here for any of us. Mm-hmm. You know, that's yeah. it. That's how it works for me. Well, Dean, I thank you. I I cannot thank you enough for chatting with me. And I I literally have to tell you, you're an enjoyable force that everyone is just loving to see. We're so glad to have you back. Like literally in the biggest band, I don't care what anybody says. They can disagree with me. But they're not going to because we're all Journey lovers here. <laughs> you're geeky and nobody disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because Journey is the best. Journey is my heart, my soul, and millions of other people totally agree with that. I mean, we just live by the Journey way. And to have you part of this again, I can't tell you like how 
excited I was when I found out you were officially back in the band, just like, gosh, only knows how many other people. I'm just one person. But everybody go see Journey. Go see Dean. Your your performance is ridiculous. Off the chain, bro. Like, it's redonkulous. Yeah. It's, you're and amazing. I got to thank you all. Kate, I do. I got to thank you all. Thank you guys for, for allowing me to come home, you know, and, and for being there for me, you know. And I know it was tough for some. I know a lot of people are like, I'm not going back because that guy's back in there. I understand. You know, if I knew that guy seven years ago and I saw that guy, I'd say I'd say the same thing. But that guy's dead, and I'm not bringing him back to life anytime soon. Yeah. You know, he's gone. And I, I like being who I am today, and I'm glad that you guys all have, have let me back. Let me back home. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 